In scripture there are such words addressed by the Apostle Peter to Christians. Most of all, have fervent love for one another, because love covers a multitude of sins. 1 Peter chapter 4 gl. 8. How can these words be rightly understood? Is it possible that the word covers means close your eyes to sin and untruth, leave everything as it is? If you follow this logic, then our God would simply close his eyes to our sins and untruths and cover to them with their love, sympathizing with us and believing that we can't live otherwise and cannot, are not able to change anything, so it's enough to say that God's love will cover all my sins. However, as we see from the word, God not only repeatedly convicts sinners of sins, calling people to repentance and cleansing from their sins, but also punishes. I am the Lord your God, a jealous God, punishing the children for the guilt of the fathers to the third and fourth generations that hate me, and showing mercy to a thousand generations to those who love me and keep my commandments. Second commandment of God. For the Lord punishes whomever he loves, beats every son whom he receives. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 6. What kind of love is this, which can cover, as well as reprove, punish and beat? I talk about true love, perhaps someone will immediately remember the husbands who, loving, beat their wives and children. And someone will cite various church antichrists as an example, who, allegedly, loving Christ, committed inquisitions, murders, mockery of heretics, went on crusades, to introduce Christ's love with the help of fire and sword, or they raised riots and revolutions, for the sake of Christ, in order to establish justice on earth, in the name of Christ. No, this is not love. There is no truth in such love. Why is God's punishment and his love different from human? Because God punishes for the admonition and salvation of the soul. He punishes through the implementation of his law of sowing and harvest. What you sow, you will reap. Beats to correct the path and life of a person, which directs him to hell. This is the love of God, in the desire to save the soul of man from eternal death. For example, one woman lived in her passions, fornicated, drank. She left her children, giving them to an orphanage. She turned into a walking monster. God in his love knocked on her many times through the denunciations of people, through the death of her mother, through the illness of the child, through the loss of property. The woman sowed evil and received retribution. Her mother died from experiences and her rudeness, the rudeness of her daughter. The child was sick because the woman conceived him in a drunken prodigal state. The property was taken away because did not pay alimony to the orphanage and did not pay utility bills. People repeatedly tried to reason with the lost. Even helped her, brought food, gave money, shamed. But everything was in vain. And then the moment came when a woman fell under the wheels of a car and was paralyzed. God's punishment. Yes. But, again, through the law of sowing and reaping, the children cried in the orphanage and called for their mother. Some of them hated her for indifference, wished her bad. People turned away from the drunkard. Her foul language and blasphemy sent curses after her. She cursed herself with swearing and blasphemy long ago. Drunk went to the same thing. That's what happened to her, what happened? But in this case, the Lord was able to get through. When she realized all her tragic situation of complete immobility, she thinked. Then she began to turn to God, ask him for forgiveness and help. The case ended with gaining faith in God, gaining spiritual freedom from alcohol addiction, love and care children. God punishes to save the soul, a person often punishes someone simply because he considers himself right. A person does not think about the soul of another person the way God thinks. The goal that he has set for himself and which he wants to achieve with the help of physical strength and coercion of another person is important to what he considers to be true. A person commits physical reprisal against those who do not listen to him and do not do as he wants. While often hiding behind the name of Christ, they say, God loves whom he punishes. A person in intemperance, anger, resentment, vanity, pride, revenge, punishes someone not for love for neighbor, 
but for love for yourself. This love is not true, it is false, because it does not have Christ and his way of life in itself. The one who considers himself right even when God convicts him with his word, when God convicts him with the image of Christ, when people reprove him and show him his errors, this person is in spiritual darkness. So what is to cover some sins? Do you know when God covers a person's sins? Then, when a person repents them and rejects them. Bible. Hebrews ch 1017. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts, and in their thoughts I will write them, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. I will cover with the love of Christ. What testament is it talking about? About the covenant of a man with the Lord after true repentance. About what sins? About those who have repented. Psalm chapter 31 verses 1 to 2. Blessed is he to whom iniquities are forgiven, and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin, and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When does this happen? Let's turn to this psalm and read further what David says. 3. While I was silent, my bones were worn out from my daily groaning. 4. For day and night your hand weighed heavily on me. My freshness has vanished, as in a summer drought. 5. But I have revealed my sin to you, and have not hidden my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you took away from me the guilt of my sin. 6. For this shall every righteous man pray to thee at the right time, and then the flood of many waters shall not reach him. 7. You are my shelter. You protect me from sorrow, surround me with the joys of deliverance. 8. I will make you understand, I will guide you in the way you go, I will guide you, my eye is on you. 9. Do not be like a horse, like a foolish hinny, whose jaws must be brimmed with a bridle and a bit, so that they obey you. 10. Sorrows are many for the wicked, but mercy surrounds him who trusts in the Lord. 11. Rejoice in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous ones, rejoice, all upright in heart. So, only when the sin is revealed before God and confessed, only after that God covers this sin with his love, i.e., forgives and does not remember more. That is why Christians can cover each other's sins in love only when the sin is confessed and washed away by the Lord's forgiveness. Otherwise, in Christian congregations it would be possible to live in clover, committing sins and all the rest would only do that they covered with godless love, that is, they closed their eyes, and sang about how God loves us all. There are people who never forgive anything, even if they are asked for forgiveness. There are people who do not believe that true repentance and faith in Christ, following him changes and transforms a person, his essence, character, way of life. Therefore, such people are not able to believe and love the one who previously was, for example, a drug addict, or a prostitute, or a murderer. Yes, it's not just, she once cited as an example the testimony of one woman who was in a concentration camp and a fascist guard bullied the prisoners there. Then, years later, in a Christian congregation, this woman met a former fascist, guard, but already in Christ, transfigured and forgiven by him, they got to know each other, he told her about how his life had changed since he came to God, how he understood a lot, painfully realized, repented, found the joy of God's grace of forgiveness. He began to ask for forgiveness from this woman too, but it was impossible for her to do this. The past stood before her eyes, and only after she turned to Christ and asked for help, the grace of love and forgiveness for this man poured out on her. The love of Christ multiplied her love and covered the sin of this man, who had already been brought into the light of the Lord and washed with his blood of the covenant. Bible. James ch 5:16. Confess your faults to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James chapter 5 verses 19 to 20. Brethren, if any of you deviate from the truth, and whoever turns him back, let him know that he who turns a sinner from his false path will save his soul from death and cover a multitude of sins. 
so without confession of sins and repentance, no love can cover sin. And if anyone in the world, let's say, wife or husband forgive each other without repentance, but simply out of, passionate love, for fornication and treason, for rudeness and lies, for humiliation and deception. Dot dot. Then they do not cover sins, but only cover them. They, cover up, with old putty, which will someday fall off and open the floodgates for the river of iniquities. One such, compassionate, woman forgave her husband's beatings until he killed her. Bible. 1 John chapter 1. And this is the message which we have heard from him and proclaim to you. God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. 6. If we say we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not walk in truth. 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ his Son cleanses us from all sin. 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 10. If we say that we have not sinned, then we represent him as a liar, and his word is not in us. In scripture,